Getting ready to submit for a building permit can feel overwhelming, especially when every city has its own process, requirements, and red tape. So where do you even begin? I'm David, a US-based architect, and in this tutorial, I'll walk you through the foundation of a solid permit drawing set using one of my real-life projects as an example. You'll learn how to organize your drawings clearly, what documents and diagrams to include, and how I use Rayon Design to streamline the entire workflow, from site plan to structural sheets. I've been using Rayon in place of AutoCAD for this kind of work, and it's the fastest way I've found to produce clean, permit-ready drawings. To follow along, just create a free account and use the template linked in the description. This is where a professional permit set starts, so let's dive in. Let's clarify what a building permit actually is. At its core, it's official permission from your local authority to move forward with construction. Whether you're remodeling a kitchen or constructing a new multifamily building, you'll need to prove that your plans comply with local zoning, safety, and building codes. Because requirements vary widely depending on location, I always begin by reviewing the municipality's checklist. These guidelines are surprisingly useful, and they often outline exactly which drawings you need to submit and how they should be presented. So here's my project. Starting with the site location, uh, this project is in Milpitas, California, which is a neighborhood south of San Francisco in the Bay Area. And the goal of the project is an interior renovation um, and then to actually add a second level. Um, so we're adding a bedroom on that second level. Um, so you can see here in the elevations, we've got this single story structure. And then in the new proposed elevations, we've got this added second level. Um, and also looking at the existing floor plans, we've got our kitchen here, um, a small bedroom here, and kind of this odd living space. Um, and then if we go to our proposed, we're really just trying to clean this up. So we're actually adding a single car garage, uh, cleaning up this bedroom here, making this more of a suite, um, and pushing the kitchen um, over to the corner. And so all of this like moving plumbing and adding a garage, things like that really necessitate, you know, a permit versus, you know, being able to do some minor renovation work without a permit. And obviously the structural impact um, and, you know, also the impact to the, uh, the street elevation and the neighborhood of adding the second story really necess necessitates uh, planning review um, and, you know, looking through the zoning code. Let's begin here with the cover sheet. While it might look like a basic intro page, it actually plays a crucial role. It sets expectations for the entire submission. In my experience, a clean, organized cover sheet signals to the reviewer that the drawing set is professional, thorough, and easy to follow. On mine, you'll find the key details up front, project title, site address, parcel number, owner information, relevant code references, and a well-organized sheet index. I also added simple vicinity map, which I created using Rayon's image and layout tools to provide quick geographical context. Next up, let's talk about the site plan. This is required by nearly all permitting authorities because it shows how the project fits within the property and surrounding context. I always include a north arrow, property lines, and dimension setbacks. These small touches go a long way in showing reviewers that the design is precise and code aware. For this project, I actually imported a PDF um, and then trace over that to develop my site plan. So I'll actually show you once we get into the floor plan, how I brought that in both through a PDF and if you, you know, say, just take a picture of an existing um, floor plan, how to import those and then start to develop your drawings. And if you're doing any sort of renovation or addition project, um, you'll always need an existing floor plan. And so there's a few ways you can go about developing that floor plan. Um, you could go and do your own measurements or you could hire an as-built services to go and do it for you. Um, but in a lot of cases, you're gonna wind up importing a file before you go and start to develop your own. So here we're showing really a complete existing floor plan, but how did we get here? So the first step is I'm gonna go up and go to our menu and import PDF. And here I've got my existing plans, just easily accessible on my desktop. I'll go ahead and open. And here we've got two options. So we can either import as images or as vectors. So images is gonna be, you know, really simple. It's gonna basically bring in this flat image of our, of our PDF. Um, vectors is actually gonna extrapolate some of that um, geometry and data. So we can actually then snap to our alignments, snap to the walls and all of that. Um, so this is going to be much more accurate to scale. This is going to be much more lightweight and easy to deal with. So for this purpose, we'll go ahead and um, bring in that vector. 
Um, and then later on, we can talk about, you know, bringing an image. Um, for example, if you wind up with um, a scan of hand drafted drawings, or if you wind up, um, you know, just taking a picture of something that's existing, you can bring that in as well. Um, so here, there's a couple ways we can do this. Um, we can either import to scale, um, you know, set the scale for the drawing, or we can set a distance. So I'll go ahead and let's find kind of a clean dimension. And let's see, so we've got this 11.8. So I'll go ahead and make sure we're snapping here. And I'll set this to 11 foot 8 inches. And I'll just set that to feet. And then it brings me back to my drawing. I can pick an insertion point. So I'll go off to the side and that is all looking good. So I can actually go ahead and start to, you know, measure off of this or I can, you know, trace directly on top, however I want to do this. Um, but then you can really start to develop this drawing based on what you just imported. All right, and what if all I have is just a picture of an existing floor plan? For that, I can actually, same kind of process, I can import an image, and let's see, I've got this existing plans image, um, and then it's just gonna insert right there. Um, and from here, you know, depending on how, you know, maybe this was a scan that I can trust is to scale, and so then I can actually, you know, make sure, uh, you know, do a scale and then I can set this as, you know, 23 foot one and three eighths. Um, so then I could, you know, potentially measure off of this, um, but more likely I'm just gonna use this as a reference. Um, and so, you know, maybe I scale it close to what it needs to be and then I can start to be like, oh, roughly, you know, how deep is this cabinet? And, you know, start to get that, get an idea based on that. Um, but more likely, I'll basically be following the dimensions um, and drawing off on the side. So now that we've got our existing floor plan drawn, the industry standard is to highlight the demolished walls uh, using a red dash. And so if we really focus on this wing of the house here and we compare that to our proposed floor plan, we're really gutting this whole area and, and reframing the new walls and to create those new spaces. So. To do that, I'm gonna go ahead and, you know, first I'll go through and select all the walls that I know are being demolished. So I'll just go ahead and select all these. Um, and then, you know, these are all currently shown at the same thickness, but they could be different thicknesses. And then this would just show as it varies, um, but I could still go ahead and change the style for, uh, for all those walls together. So first for the fill, I don't need a hatch here. I'm just gonna switch this to a white fill. Um, and then I'm gonna make this a little bit thicker. And we want this outline to be red and we want this to have a dash. So that is all showing really easy. Um, and so that just makes it abundantly clear that what we're, what we're demolishing here um, and then similarly here, uh, we've got this hatch to depict that these are new walls. Um, and so say, you know, I want to use this wall type throughout the rest of the house. Um, then I can very easily, I'll just select one of these. I'll go ahead and save this as a style um, and I'll label this demo. And then I can really easily, um, you know, say I know that these walls are also being demoed. Um, I can go and I can switch these to the demo style. And so that's just going to make it really easy for me to go through all of my floor plan and see which walls are being demolished. Um, and I can just very easily go ahead and change that to that style. And so now that I've got this wall type saved as a style, um, I can actually bring this in on other projects. So I'm not necessarily starting from scratch. So I don't have to go through that same process of like, oh, I'm gonna, you know, go through and edit all this. Um, so I can actually, because I have this saved as a style, I can then share and go up to libraries and then I can just publish this as a style. Um, and so that way, 
when I go into when I start a new project, I can go into my styles library and I can select this dem this demo wall type. I can select any of my you know saved text or maybe I really like this green on the furniture. So I can really just bring all of that in and make each project look the same without starting from scratch. And to give some added context to your reviewer, it's always a wise decision to bring in some existing site photos. So we already talked about how to bring in a JPEG, but some of the things you can do with those JPEGs is you can go ahead and upscale. So if you have kind of a blurry image, you can go and you know make this a little clearer. And I know this is probably not the best example because it's already a good picture. Um, but some of the other things you can do is you know, you can do some minor edits, um, just, you know, if, if you wanted to make this a little clearer, uh, maybe I want to make that red really pop. Um, so you can go ahead and make those edits and then you can also go ahead and, you know, remove the background. And so maybe not the most useful for, you know, site photos, but this is where it gets really helpful for if you, if you bring in, um, you know, a product photo from a manufacturer's website for, uh, furniture or plumbing fixtures, you can go ahead and remove the background and then start to develop these really nice uh, mood boards and presentations for your clients. So now we get to the most important part, proposed floor plans. So this is where we want to show the changes that we want to make that we're asking for permission from the municipalities for. So we've already talked about using our styles to delineate between the proposed walls and the demolished walls. Um, but how do we actually develop this floor plan? And so it's all very simple, just using the walls and openings tools. So say we want to add a closet here. I will just go to our wall tool and simply draft out the closet that we want to have. And maybe I know that this needs to be six feet wide on the inside. I can very easily go ahead and make that edit. Um, and then I'll go ahead and use the zone tool and I'll call that zone closet. And it's automatically showing me the area for that zone. I'll go ahead and center that. Um, and then I'll go ahead and open and uh, add an opening here. Um, and obviously this is not a window. And so I want to go ahead and open up our library. And I kind of like the look of that bifold door. So we'll go ahead and do that. All right. And then it's going to ask me the orientation. Obviously, I want it opening out. Um, and, you know, I can go ahead and edit that if I wanted. But just to show you how easy it is to just bring some elements in. Um, and then the other element that Rayon provides is all this context, all these blocks for furniture, uh, furniture, fixtures. Um, and, you know, the block library also provides some scale figures. But just to, to show how much this helps, you know, you can kind of see how this space doesn't, you know, it's, it's hard to see like how this makes sense. But once you go ahead and add this context, then it starts to really come together. You can understand how somebody might live in it. Um, and to do this is simply with rounds block libraries. And so there's thousands of blocks provided um, that you can, you know, bring in for furniture, fixtures, scale figures. Um, one thing that is really beneficial and maybe less so for a permit set where you're just issuing the floor plans. But once we get into our interior elevations, um, if I bring this bring this block down um, from our floor plan, I can actually go and select other views of that same block. And so I can very easily st start to generate our um, elevations and sections based on just those blocks that we've already um, selected for our floor plans. Um, and so that was, this is one way to do it, which, um, you know, I just showed where you can copy it, um, and then go over to your properties and choose a different view of this. Um, or the other thing that you can do, and I'll do a search for a dog. Um, if I select the family, then this is going to show me all few, all three views of that, um, of that block. So can very easily start to generate floor plan, section elevation, um, and side elevation all through the block library. And next, let's talk about elevations. So exterior elevations, especially for a project like this, where we're actually changing the massing of the structure, um, re are really important to include in our permit set. Um, this would actually be reviewed prior to this, going through for uh, planning approval as well. Um, and so here with our existing elevations, we're showing some uh, height datums. 
We're showing all of our openings. Um, so really getting a feel for what the existing structure looks like. Um, and then here we're showing some materiality, um, some, you know, the actual new heights um, of all the new roof forms. Um, and then one thing that I always like to do is give a little bit of a pop to the windows. Windows are oftentimes kind of like the eyes or like the soul of the building. And so um, showing a little bit of color here is always something that I like to do. Um, and so maybe, you know, we're showing this light blue here, but maybe I want to change that um, and add a little bit more uh, context. And so, you know, I'll click in here and, you know, maybe we want this to be kind of a darker blue, right? So give it a little more of a moody kind of look. Um, and then another thing that I oftentimes like to do is to just give a little bit of a glare to the windows. Um, and so I'll go ahead and I'll just start to draw this polyline. And I know that that line weight is looking a little crazy, but that's something we can totally change um, as we move along. So first I'll go ahead and add a fill. Um, and it looks like that is correct. That's what I want. Um, and I'm actually gonna go ahead and I'm gonna delete that stroke because we don't need a stroke. Um, and then I'm gonna make this like 20%. So it's just kind of a little glint there. And I'm gonna copy that across to our other windows here. Um, and if I wanted to, I could do that within the block or however, you know, this project is organized. But there, you know, really starts to add a little bit of character, a little bit of life to the drawings. Using round, we're not just limited to plans, elevations, sections, kind of those basic drawings. We can actually get into uh, some details, um, even some product data. And so, you know, here we're showing kind of a basic fence, um, but we're also being we're also able to bring in some JPEGs just for product data that our contractor might be interested in. Um, and then here we can get into a little bit more specifics. Um, you know, we can start to use our annotation tools. Um, and even some, you know, shadow and some textures. Um, so we can really start to develop these details um, and make them pop and make them really uh, a part of the set. And finally, always ask yourself what's missing from the set. This drawing set is coming together, but there are still a few essential documents that I need to include before it's ready for submission. Depending on your municipality, that may include building sections, massing studies, lead documentation, and any other supporting materials. Before submitting your own permit package, double check your local checklist to ensure that you're not missing anything. Submitting an incomplete set can delay approvals or worse, prevent your clients from moving forward with the project. Once the set is complete, exporting from Rayon is straightforward. You can generate a clean PDF or share a live URL with your clients or consultants that always reflects the most up-to-date version, keeping everyone aligned without endless email threads. So that's a look at how I build a foundation of a building permit set starting from existing conditions all the way through proposed plans, elevations, and key documentation. As you've seen, it's not just about drawing, it's about presenting your design clearly, meeting local requirements, and making it easy for reviewers to say yes. Using RAND Design has made this process significantly faster and more flexible, and it's becoming my go-to tool for projects like this. If you'd like to explore the drawing set I used in this tutorial, or try building your own, the template and free sign-up link are in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I hope this helped clarify not just how to create for permits, but where to begin. If you want more in-depth tutorials on permit drawings, design workflow, or using Rayon day-to-day, -day, be sure to subscribe. See you in the next one.